All right, um, so let me share the screen here. Okay, so uh, the, you know, the, the thing is not giving me a GPU. So let's just run it from the GitHub. Um, so it's under deep learning algorithms, second edition, made a copy of it in CNNs. And it's the one called fine tune ResNet sorted checkpoints, okay? Right, this is the one I was describing previously. So there's a few additional little ideas that you need to understand, right? So I'm not gonna repeat this, uh, but I just discussed this in the previous lecture, all these details. And I think we were, we covered this, right? So we covered this part, yeah? And then I said, so that's the, this is the actual ResNet using Torch Vision ResNet 18. So then we are gonna cover uh, my ResNet, but that's a separate, you know, that's doing it from scratch. So we went over this and this. We talked about the training function and I just recommend it because you're taking a, a, a pre-trained model that may be an inference mode, make sure to put it in train mode. All right, so I think this is where I was. So basically the core functions, notice that because it's fine tuning, you have a pre-trained ResNet so you can basically just do a few epics, such as 10 epics. Uh, the learning rate, you can disregard this learning rate because we're not actually going to use that learning rate. Uh, as you have to, it, it's actually really interesting, okay? This is really interesting. Um, and it has to do with this idea of freezing the layers, for instance, right? But instead of freezing the layers, what we're gonna have is all the layers are gonna be unfrozen but we're going to have two learning rates. Why do we have two learning rates? Because what did we do with the ResNet, right? With the ResNet, we, when we instantiated the, the architecture, where was it? Here, we basically take, take the whole 18 ResNet layers, right? But we remove the head, the last layer. And we added this, this one here, right? Our torch NN linear. So that layer, if you notice, for FC is the one that get, the weights get initialized with savior, right? So those weights are what? Essentially random. Do you agree? For that one layer. But for all the previous layers, there's actually weights in them, okay? So another technique, instead of freezing, all those previous layers and just training on the on this layer, what you can do is have two learning rates. Do you see where I'm going with this? So one learning rate for this can be bigger. Remember that can make bigger changes, right? Bigger updates to the weights. Whereas the learning rate for the other 34 or 18 layers that were with, uh, you know, that are already trained, we're gonna modify them, but by very little with the second learning rate. Do you see that? So that's a kind of, that's kind of nice because it's like we're looking at all those previous 18 and we're touching them a little bit and making tiny updates. Do you see that? But not big updates. But for the final layer, we do big updates because it requires that. It's got random weights. Do you guys understand that concept? So it's it's another approach to fine-tuning a pre-trained model. Any questions on that? All right, so that's that's basically it, okay? So, you as, and then I'll just show you how that works. So I'm gonna go over here. Yeah, so we're gonna continue here. So as you can see, here I just printed all the Torch Vision models. So we have AlexNet, which we discussed in the previous lecture. Um, I don't know that uh, Jan LeCun's uh, Lenet will be here, it could be. Uh, we got some dense nets, efficient nets. There's Gula nets, right? Gula net. So that one's in there. There's the inception ones that you were reading my document there. Uh, inception models. There's, remember last week we talked about how there's uh, vision transformers in there. Mobile nets for mobile applications. There's the rest net. Oh, there is a rest net in here. I wonder how many layers that one has. Maybe it has fewer than, that's a, I was looking for a smaller one and I didn't see this one. 
Okay, uh, there is uh, VGG, which I discussed today, right? We went over a little bit of the VGG. There's the Vision Transformer. So you can see there's a Vision Transformer in there. Uh, Google and Net, a different uh, implementation and so on. So there are several versions. There is a rest that I wonder how many layers this thing has. It's worth trying. Uh, VGD and so on. Okay, so we we so you can see you can play with all of these kind of you have a, an intuition. That was one of my, my reasons for the previous lecture. I just wanted you to like get a feel for how they're different. All right, so now back to training your pre-trained ResNet. So what do you have to do now? Notice over here, I am invoking GetNet, right? So GetNet is that function and I do two torch device. So I'm effectively sending it to the GPU and instantiating the model. But this is now the previous model with the ResNet 18 and the new head. Make sense? So we just did that. All right, so let's go. So this I just explained a second ago, but I'll read this for you guys. Two learning rates for fine tuning, right? So when fine tuning, the model parameters of the network body are trained using a lower learning rate than that for the head, right? So that's what I was trying to tell you because you the 18 layers are good. So we're just like nudging them a little bit in one direction or the other, but that final layer gets a bigger learning rate. Um, so that's the idea. I like that idea. actually. So are trained using a lower learning rate than for the head. Since for the latter, right, we have to train them from scratch. So we rely on something called parameter groups from PyTorch to define two learning rates for two groups. So that's what I'm going to show you in the code, how to implement that one. You can see it down here. Um, and use the atom optimizer with a decay of that value, uh, basically. All right, so here is the, the implementation. So you can almost think of this as the an equivalent to the freezing of some of the layers, right? So I've got a learning rate, which is pretty tiny, and I've got a weight decay as a parameter for the atom optimizer, right? So these are just parameters. There is the learning rate, okay? But here we're gonna use this object called um, param, okay, param. So the learning rate, LR is this one, right? Which is pretty small, right? You agree? If we multiply that times 10, what happens to that learning rate? It's bigger, right? Yeah, bigger? Yeah, all right, so it makes it bigger, right? So that's basically what you can do. You just multiply it times a factor of 10 or whatever you want. So you start, this is what probably like four zeros and a one, right? If I remember correctly, this is learning rate. And notice that that learning rate is what gets used for everything, pretty much. It's like the normal way of setting the learning rate. So that means that's going to be applied to the whole model where the first 18 layers are what? The pre-trained ResNet 18. Got it? The tiny learning rate. But we need to tell it that for that last layer, before the output prediction, we want to use a bigger learning rate. So you can see that here in this example with params, right? So you can see that there. Uh, we do model FC parameters. So model FC we know is that final head that we added. And notice that the learning rate that we pass to it is what? LR times 10. What does that mean? That learning rate should be effectively bigger. Yeah? You guys can corroborate with your calculators, right? But that's <laughs> kind of the idea, okay? So that's what we're doing here. And then we need to populate this. So this is a common thing. So you say, uh, we're gonna have four name param and model dot name parameters if, so we're iterating through the whole architecture, right? Of, the, of that model that we created with get name. And we say, if it matches FC or if FC not, actually, if it doesn't match it, right? Then, um, we add those parameters here, basically. 
Okay, so this should be if F, so these should be all the other parameters, right? So we're just telling Adam one set of parameters and another set of parameters, basically. Right? You agree? Okay, so so in 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 if in in essence, this allows us to uh, set two different learning rates. So params one x are the parameters of the network body, i.e., of all layers except the FC layers. Got it. So you know this this uh, params is usually passed here, but we're just specifying that there are two parameters. Okay, so all of them will use this learning rate. And this learning rate is this one, which is tiny. So the change should be minuscule, right, in theory, right? But this set, the FC, it's bigger. And that's an approach to follow. Any questions? Okay. All right. So this is how you guys can proceed training a, uh, or fine tuning, sorry, a pre-trained model with two learning rates. All right, so I'm not hearing any questions. All right, so then uh, cross entropy is over here, it's the same thing. And then I just started running the train set as, as, as I had to kill it. But basically this would just be the very regular approach and hopefully the loss would go down. Uh, then this is just print, you know, the, the metrics, right? For performance. This is just the, the same thing, but the, the PyTorch equivalent of it. And then after that, you would just uh, test the model, which is what I was trying to do by loading it from checkpoint. And I need to load the model, the data actually, to the GPU. So I wonder if maybe I have to load this one to the GPU, but I just think that would be even more RAM consumption. So I am not... Sure. And that's it. So that concludes the fine tuning a pre-trained model that you've and uh, you've gotten from something like Torch Vision. Are there any questions? Does it make sense? But really just those ideas basically. Okay. All right. So let's go to still don't have a GPU. Oh. Did any of you try to get one? None of you tried. Yeah. Let me try one more time. You want me to do one? Go at where it is? Yeah, sure. Of course. Give me a sec. Uh, that's actually this next topic I was going to cover. Uh, yeah. Because we didn't use that just now. Right? You understand? So right now, that's actually the contrast I'm trying to show you is, yeah. So this here, this here, and this here, we haven't used yet. Instead, we used a pre-trained model from Torch Vision. And I just showed you how to take it and just change the last layer for your task, basically. Now, so hopefully that would have run, would run. So I'm gonna have to work on it tomorrow uh, once I get a GPU. Um, but now what we're gonna discuss is the using a, creating your own residual network, if that makes sense, okay? So actually for that one, I think I have uh, this one. I did this on my own computer, my local uh, GPU. So this should be the implementation. I'll just show you real quick. And then we're gonna dissect the code for the rest of the class. You can get this one also from the GitHub, but I'm, I believe this is, uh, these are the, this is one where I ran that, that wrestling. Yeah. So you can see it here. You can see that in this code, I have instantiated 
my ResNet res with residual block um, and loaded it to the device, to the GPU, okay? So this is what we're gonna discuss now, okay? And it basically is, again, instead of creating a CNN or instead of taking a pre-trained ResNet from Torch Vision, now you're going to implement a ResNet from scratch. And of course, that means that you have to pre-train it also from scratch, right? Now, it's not going to be a ResNet as deep, though, as um, what you have in, uh, you know, Torch Vision. I mean, there's only a few layers. But anyway, that's the that's the idea. So you can see uh, we're going to instantiate that ResNet. After training, I, I trained it for 500 epochs. Oh, no. Yeah, 500 epochs. And when I ran the performance, I achieved 71%. So I could have continued to train it, right? Made it deeper, et cetera. But in essence, at least we know it, it does learn. And from there, if you ever have a need to create a ResNet from scratch, you know, you can uh, think about that. Does that make sense, guys? All right, so once again, um, so my goal was to do this lecture with the same code so I, you, could, you know, we can just swap out the different models. So now I'm going to do the exact same problem, but I'm swapping out, you know, obviously for the pre-trained model with just your own ResNet. So that's what we're going to dig deep into it. And that's basically the end of the course, right? So this is the last topic, um, you know, that we're going to discuss. All right, so again, um, oh, I got a GPU. Here we go. You know, finally. Yes, I'm going to grab it before I lose it. All right, so I was running this one, I think. Okay, so I'm going to run. I'm, I'm not going to run the uh, the ResNet anymore, right? The, from Torch Vision, instead, we're just going to do the other part, okay? The from scratch. So I'm going to do, so that, that we should be able to do with, whatever. let's see what we have though. Hopefully we don't have one of those MIG ones. What do I have? An NVIDIA A30, hopefully. Okay. Buddha. I have a MIG. See how they, they're they giving me these little MIG ones, which are much smaller than... And be careful if you, you know, if you're using Scholar, if you see this, it means you're not actually getting a full GPU. You're getting like a piece of a GPU, right? That's at least that's what they explained to me. So this might take a little bit longer to train, unfortunately. And I'll let it load. All right, so it's gonna do that for a little bit. All right, so let's go back to the GitHub here. Basically, it's the same script as before, right? So you load the data. I'm not gonna explain all that again. Um, you convert it into data loaders, basically. Data loaders. But not in, this is where the data loaders are completed. So now to create your residual uh, network, you're going to use basically these three functions. So you create your own convolution, basically, which is really just a con 2D. So there's really not much going on there. It's just that this just allows you to like set certain parameters and reuse them, right? Because the just like we did with transformers, this is actually very similar. I don't know if you guys remember, we created a list of the heads and then we, we were able to just concatenate them or we created a list of the transformer blocks through NN sequential. And then we had that whole architecture, right? And, and like very efficiently, this is very similar in that concept, okay? Very similar. So here uh, it has this convolution, it has the residual block basically, which as the name implies, it does the residuals. You can see the residual right there. Output equal output plus residual, 
okay? Right? So where the residual is just what? X at the beginning, right? It's just stored there, okay? So I, you know, that same idea. And here, this is the actual my ResNet. So we'll, we'll just talk about how it's implemented, okay? And then basically that will, we can even think of what it looks like. Like draw it out basically, right? So what's the, the overall shape it has? And then we can skip all the other ones. So really all we have to do with this one, notice that the train loop is exactly the same one. We're always using the word model for, you know, we just point model to whatever it is that we're using. So that's not an issue. 500 epics this time, we only use one learning rate here and I'm using 0 0.001 because we're not differentiating anymore. And notice that here, I just instantiated my ResNet, right? And I load it to the GPU. Okay, that's basically all you have to do. Give it the model parameters, the learning rate, et cetera. And then it does the training and it does the test, okay? All right, so now we're gonna think about this model, uh, my ResNet, right? So we're gonna go over here back to the definition of my ResNet. Here. So this is my ResNet, right? This is the class. It's got an init function. It's got this make layer function that gets used. So notice here, for instance, you create layer one, layer two, layer three, and la those layers are just invoking self.makeLayer, which is basically this function, which allows you to create multiple layers, right? So it's just breaking off complexity, similar to what we had done with the transformer where we created like heads and multi-head and attentions and so on. At the end of the day, though, it's this, right? This is the overall architecture that we have. So what do we have there? Notice that in the forward function, we have an input X, right? We have an input X. And then, so that X goes in. It goes into a convolution, right? So we have one convolution. BN is going to be a batch normalization. So batch normalization, you know, normalizing the data in batches. Then we've got a ReLU. And then the output then goes into three layers, layer one, layer two, and layer three, which are basically the residual layers, right? So you can see that here. Then we have layer one, layer two, layer three, right? You see that. The output is just going through the whole neural network do you guys see that? But these layer ones are the things that we're going to have to define up here, right? So we're going to talk about that in a sec. After that, the output goes through an average pooling, you know, a max pooling type of thing, a pooling. Do you guys remember what max pooling and average pooling is, right? Basically making the images smaller. We would cut them in like half or make them into half. So a pool basically. And then after the pool, the out goes into a view, which is a reshaping. And that makes sense because we need to reshape it to go into the last uh, FC, this one here, right? Last FC, which I'm betting, let's see what it is, but I think I know what it is, right? So FC is where, do you guys see it? What is it? The fully connected layer, right? So we have a fully connected layer. And then from 64 to number of classes, this is the Cypher 10. So it's how many? 10. Do you guys see that? All right. So that's the whole architecture of your own rest, of your own rest that none of this is that complex, but we have to drill down, right? We have to drill down into what all of these things are and so on. So, so let's start. So obviously the definition of these is going to be up here in the init class, but it does make use of this batch normals. Uh, oh, sorry, of this make layer, right? So, so let's see what that is. So we've got here, we've got the number of channels. Notice that a con, 
So this conv over here is what? What is this conv? It's nothing more than instantiating conv three by three. And what is conv three by three? It's really just this one over here, conv three by three. If we look inside, it's a conv 2D. And basically you're just providing the parameters, the number of filters, the number of inputs and outputs that you have. Very much how you would do it in CNN. You guys see that? So that one hopefully addresses this. It should be straightforward. Okay. Then BN was a batch normalization, right? And you, you know, normalize the outputs. We've got a ReLU, okay? Uh, and then with the average pooling is just an NN average pooling and FC is just an NN linear. So that should be similar. So then that just leaves this one over here, right? The make layer, which notice that the make layer takes several things, parameters for the layers, but also this block which is provided here in the initialization. And the block is just what? The residual block over here. This is passed when we instantiate it, right? So when we did right here, when we instantiate my ResNet, we pass the class residual block into it. And that basically then makes its way through block into here, right? And now, so basically these layers will have the blocks, basically the residuals, if you will. These are the blocks, okay? All right, so now we need to go into make layer and think about it a little bit. So make layer takes in these out, these block and number of blocks that you're gonna wanna have in there and the channels and so on. So we have a parameter. We and notice here, you're gonna check some things, but basically uh, we have this, right? NN dot sequential, all right? So NN dot sequential throw, and then we use NN. Uh, so yeah, so this is NN dot sequential. So this takes con three by three, a convolution, which is this one up here. And then after that, a batch normalization, right? So the network uh, in the layers themselves has a convolution, right? Every layer, basically layer one, layer two, layer three, has a convolution inside. Do you guys see that or no? So, it, it, so here we saw that we have a convolution, but what I'm saying is these three also have convolutions inside. You agree? And you can see that right here in this NN sequential. Yep. Question? Okay. All right. Then after that, uh, we have layers. Layers append. So we're going to do um, a block, basically. Because layers is what? It's a list, right? So this is similar to when we did the heads. Remember the heads in the transformer? We had a list of eight heads, right? You know, and, and that this is something similar here. We have now created a list called layers and we append to it one block, basically with the parameters in number of inputs, outputs, et cetera, okay? And then here we have a for loop where we do what? For I in range blocks, right? So what does that mean? You're gonna define how many blocks you want in each layer. Do you guys see that? So every layer now has, if, if we blow it up, it's going to have a convolution followed by, you know, however many blocks you want to have. What are these blocks? The residual blocks. Okay. So that's what you're going to have in here. They get appended to layers, right? Right here in this for loop. So if that list has 10 blocks, now you have 10 blocks. The trick is you give layers the NN sequential, you see that? So now you're able to take those 10 blocks and it's gonna treat them as sequential. So the input goes into one block, then the other block, then the other block, then the other block. We did this before in the transformer, in the GPT. It's exactly the same idea. Any questions about that? 
the same same little trick being used again. All right, so I'll repeat. Make layer just creates a um, a convolution, right, with a batch normalization, right. Then that is followed by we create the list of blocks basically, right, and then that list of blocks just goes into an N sequential, and we end up for each layer with a convolution and several blocks. So then the question is, what is in these blocks, right? So that's the last part of this. So then uh, we're going to look for that here, the residual block. As the name implies, this is basically where the X is being, you know, transformed, but then added to the output of the transformations. Okay. So you can see that here we have our residual block class. And let's take a look at the forward function first. So how does it work? We start, every block gets an input, right? The image, whatever it is. And notice that the first thing we do is we make assign X to a variable called residual. And that reminds us that that's the thing that we're gonna add back at the end, okay? That little trick is what allows you to build really deep neural networks, okay? So then the X also goes into con one. So what is con one? Con one is just a con three by three with the end channels and everything. So it's a convolution, okay? That the output of that goes into BN one. What is BN one? A batch normalization, okay? Then the output of that goes into what? A ReLU, which should be super familiar to you by now, hopefully. Then uh, the output of the out here goes into what? Conv2. What is Conv2? Same to, as Conv1, a convolution. Provide all the parameters. The out of that goes into BN2. What is BN2? A batch normalization, right? Getting repetitive at this point, right? Um, and then uh, basically we have a parameter, true or false, if, if down sample, so th there's a down sample uh, function, I think, somewhere in here that was defined. So there's this, comes in through here. So in the residual blocks, yeah, we're sending this down sample, which is this, ah, okay. So down sample is actually this, this operation, okay? Which is what, another sequential, with a convolution in it. Do you see that? That's actually what is happening. Uh, where the stride is probably changing, so it does the max pulling there. Okay, so basically, that after that, the output, if we blow this out, this is out equal out plus residual. So what does that mean? It means we gave X, we ran it through all of this, and it produced an out. And then that out, right, gets modified by adding the original X. Okay, so so what is that? So we, so that is out. So out. Uh, so X goes in through all the layers, and it becomes out. And then out is equal to out plus. Uh, the original X, right? So I'll, I'll write that down in the whiteboard here. Okay, so what I'm saying is, right, in that block, we're in residual block, you have X, it goes in through all the things in that block, and the output of that is out, right? But we don't just use this out because of the vanishing gradients. So we need to take out, out plus X, but we call it residual because that's how we saved it in the variable. So then here, that's, the original X, and this is the output of transforming that X through all the layers. That's basically a residual. 
Got it? Such a simple solution, right? It seems almost crazy to me that this allowed neural networks of 152 layers or transformers or whatever, and all of it works now somehow. It's amazing. All right, so that hopefully made sense, right? So that's the residual block and that's the residual operation. So we can go back to the code itself and analyze, and we're almost done. So then, you know, we've got our block. Again, I'll repeat the resid the X just gets saved into residual. You run it through all these convolutions and everything, blah, blah, blah. You do a down sample pooling operation and this little thing right there gets X transform into output, but then you add back the X, the residual. And that's a ResNet in essence. And then finally, this output just runs through, you know, famous ReLU activation. Because remember, neural networks, to be actual neural networks, they should have, I usually like to say, two hidden layers and activation functions, right? So, so you know, always, this is really important, actually. So I think all of these were defined already, a con, batch. Yeah, so all of these were defined. And that's it. Any questions? And if you run this with Cypher 10, I, I didn't have any memory issues with this. As you can see, I did run it on my local machine though. That's the only thing I will say. After 500 epics, I was able to achieve 0.72. I'm sure it, it would have gone higher. The state of the art for Cypher 10 is 96, I want. No, 99, 99, so basically 100. Okay, but you have to use probably a ResNet, a really powerful ResNet. All right, guys, so that's basically it. All right, so hopefully that um, I don't have anything else to say. Obviously, there's way more. We didn't get to touch stable diffusion or you know Sora or those things, but hopefully you're able to pick it up from here, right? So you're, you're able to um, go on from here. So I'll stop the recording. I'll stop here.